So um, what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is we have f of x equals a of x over b of x. All right, so last time we talked about the reciprocal function. And when we looked at the reciprocal function, we had asymptotes, right? We had where the graph approached these little dotted lines. Um, so if we just kind of go back and remember, if we had f of x equaled 1 over x, all right, that was what we called the reciprocal function. And the reciprocal function was kind of cool. It went like this, then it went like that. But what we noticed there are some couple important points was we had these little dotted lines where you can see this is where the graph approached, right? And it approached it at two different points, at the dotted line y equals 0 and x equals 0. And what we found out was the reason why it approached x equals 0 but never actually had touched it was because we can never have 0 as our x, right? We can never, you can never have x as 0 because then you can't divide by 0. So this graph approached when x equals 0 to infinity and to negative infinity, but it never actually crossed it. It never actually equaled 0 because we knew that you know, that would be undefined. So when we look at what we call a rational function, and what a rational function, Ryan, simply is, is this is a polynomial over another polynomial. All right. Now polynomials, ladies and gentlemen, can be constant polynomials. Right? This could be 4 over x squared. It could be binomials, or we could be dealing with trinomials as well. It just means a polynomial. But now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the asymptotes of our function. So the first one we're going to deal with is the vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote of a rational function, that means when you have one polynomial, divided by another polynomial, all right? The vertical asymptote is going to be when b of x is equal to 0. And that's very similar to like this one, which is like a reciprocal function. But you can see the polynomial up there is just equal to 1. But we know that x cannot equal 0, right? x cannot equal 0. So whenever you have your denominator, when you have a function divided by another function, whenever you have your denominator equal to 0, that's your vertical asymptote. All right, so you guys are going to want to write down vertical asymptote is when your denominator function or denominator polynomial equals 0. Then what we also notice, ladies and gentlemen, is there is a horizontal asymptote. Right? We have this horizontal one going at y equals 0. Now, how do we figure out when we have a horizontal or what that horizontal asymptote is? Well, there's a couple of rules. All right, and you guys are going to want to write each one of these down. So for our horizontal asymptote, all right, there's three different ways that we can look at this. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the degree. Remember, every polynomial, ladies and gentlemen, has a degree. right? And the degree, Nicholas, is, do you remember the degree of a polynomial is? The degree of a polynomial, the definition of a degree of a polynomial is? Well, just of any polynomial. It could be to the fourth power. It could be a polynomial to the fifth power. What is the definition of a degree of a polynomial, Sarah? OK. Madoka, does anybody remember the degree of a polynomial? All right, let's go back. Isn't that the largest exponent? It's the largest, it's the t largest power of, your t of a term in a polynomial. For instance, if I said, let's say a of x equaled x squared plus 2x plus 1. The degree of that is equal to 2. What if I said a of x equaled, so you could say degree equals 2. What if I said 3x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 2x to the eighth? The degree of this polynomial is 8. It's your largest power of a term. You got to make sure you write them in descending order. Right? We write them in descending order. And then we notice it's the power that determines our degree. The largest power is going to determine our degree. So going back on a quick review of polynomials and degrees, so what we're going to look at, ladies and gentlemen, is how to determine our horizontal asymptotes. So when we look at the degree, so to determine horizontal asymptotes, we're going to be looking at the degrees. All right. So when the degree 
all right, of b of x is larger than the degree of a of x. So when this degree is larger than the degree of your numerator polynomial, we have um, y equals 0 is your asymptote. All right. Now let's go and see. This one has an asymptote of y equals 0. So does that make sense? Well, let's go and look at the degree. What's the degree of my polynomial up top? Could I write it as x equals 0? Yeah. 1 times x equals 0, right? And what's the degree of my denominator? 1. Is 1 greater than 0? Yes. So since 1 is greater than 0, you can see that that's why this one has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. All right? What about if my degree of a of x is less than b of x? Okay, so what if they're switch swapped, right? Then guess what? We have no horizontal asymptote. So if the numerator, the polynomial of my numerator is larger than the degree of the, poly of the polynomial and denominator, then I just wrote that the exact same thing, didn't I? OK. So let's say b of x is less than a of x. So if the degree in the, de in the degree in the denominator is less than the degree in the numerator, then guess what? They are going to be um, uh, equal to each other. All right? Then, or I'm sorry, there's going to be no horizontal asymptote which we might be a oblique or a slant asymptote, which we'll talk about in a second. Then the last one is, well, it's either one is greater than the other, or they could also be, rhymes with equal? Equal. equal. So what if a, b of x equals a of x? So now if they're equal, this is going to be a little bit kind of crazy. I'm going to use the same variables. But our horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals a over b, where a and b are the leading coefficients. of their polynomials. Okay, I know that looks a little kind of crazy and going through there. But let's go back. So we talked about degrees. Let's go and remind ourselves what leading coefficients are. So if I said a of x equals 4x squared plus 2x minus 1, we know the degree of this function is 2. And what's the leading coefficient? The degree is 2, so the leading coefficient is? Remember, your leading coefficient is your coefficient of your term that it has your degree, right? So if we did one more, let's say I said b of x equaled um, 3x minus 5x squared plus 1. Well, this one we need to rewrite in standard form, right? So it would be negative 5x squared plus 3x plus 1. So the degree of this is? 2, and the leading coefficient is four. negative 5. So what if I said my function, what if I did a of x over b of x? And if I said, what's the horizontal asymptote? We could say it is y equals the leading coefficient on my a is 4, leading coefficient on my b is 5, or negative 5. So it would be the line of 4, uh, four over negative 5. So you'd, find that, so you'd find that horizontal line, and that's what you'd graph. All right. So I'll go back and do a quick little summary. To find vertical asymptotes, you take your denominator and set it equal to 0. The values that make your denominator equal to 0 are your vertical asymptotes. To find the horizontal asymptotes, there you need to look at the degrees of the two functions. You have a function in the numerator and a function in the denominator. If the degree in the denominator is larger than the degree in the numerator, 
your horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. If the degree in the numerator is sm uh, smaller than, or I'm sorry, larger than the one in the denominator, then you have no horizontal asymptote. And if the degrees of the two polynomials are exactly the same, then you take the leading coefficients and divide them, and that is your horizontal asymptote. OK? Awesome. All right. So that is a 10-minute explanation of asymptotes.